Hey, what is going on guys? It's Brandon Obando here. And today we are gonna be working on the FRS in a way. Uh, we don't currently have the FRS here, as you guys can tell. It's uh, it's currently not here. It's still off getting its tube frame done. I think I talked about this in a previous video already, so it's not anything like, it's not spoiler alert or anything like that. But the thing is, it's been off for uh, tube frame for almost a month now. I think it's been over a month actually. And it's been taking a lot longer than I was expecting. That is the reason why there hasn't been videos is because of the fact that I just don't have the car here right now. And with the car not being here, there's not much for me to do. And I don't have that interesting of a life, so I can't really vlog, even though I really, really want to do vlogging. Uh, somebody's calling me. <laughs> One second. Anyways, like I was saying, I don't have that interesting of a life. And uh, so there's not very much for me to just go out and film. I could also go out and do like biking or skateboarding or some type of videos like that. Like things I find interesting, but I don't do very often. Uh, last time I was skating was probably a year ago. If that, probably longer than that even. So there's not much for me to do in vlog and things like that. And like right now there's currently riots going down in Minneapolis, but I'm not gonna take advantage of the situation and just make vlogs based off of that just because it's able to get views. If I'm not gonna be down there doing something productive, I don't wanna film it at all. And I just don't wanna film it even if I do go down there, which I might go down there tomorrow to help clean up. But I don't really wanna film that because it's just, it, it makes me feel like I'm taking advantage of the situation and things like that. So I don't wanna take advantage of any situations but at the same time, I do not I do want to do vlogs. Uh, I've been investing a lot more money into vlogs altogether. And I'll talk more about it when we actually start doing like camera videos and stuff because I'm going to do a video on all this later on if you guys are interested. So hit subscribe if you want to see that. Anyways, on to the main topic of the video today. What we're going to be doing is we got some new wheels down there. I bought those uh, for drift spares since there's supposed to be a drift event on Wednesday. I might be able to hit up... Um, I might be able to hit up a drift event this Wednesday with the FRS. I'm not sure if it's gonna be done. It's currently Monday, so there's two days between now and then. Uh, the tires come in tomorrow, which are gonna be some Achilles 223s. I'll talk about it more when we have them, if we do anything with them, <laughs> as, as far as our vlog goes. But uh, pretty much, I bought these wheels specifically for the event on Wednesday. I'm not sure when, or if I'm even gonna make it to the event because I have no idea when the FRS is gonna be done. If the FRS is done, I will 100% be going to this event. I have been dying to go to an event for so long and I've missed probably like three or four events by now just because the car hasn't been done. So with that being said, I do want to get these, uh, what basically what we're going to be doing today is going to be cleaning up these wheels, uh, getting them ready to put tires on, and then hopefully the car is done either by tonight, tomorrow, or early morning uh, Wednesday. And if, if that's the case, we'll go ahead, throw the wheels on, and head up to Brainerd and have a drift event. And hopefully more videos will start coming out once that car is done. Uh, I have a lot of plans for the car. We're just not, it's not here, so I can't make the videos. That's basically what I'm trying to say. So anyways, we're going to start working on these wheels. What we're going to be doing is we're just going to be cleaning them up. I'm actually going to pull them out so you guys can see them real quick. But pretty much what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cleaning up the wheels, getting them all ready for paint, and we're going to be repainting them. I just like things that look nice. I don't know why, uh, but like even though they're drift spares, I want them to look nice. And uh, by the way, I'm recording on the GoPro for vlogs from now on. And anything time lapse is going to be on the Sony A6000 that you guys probably can't see because it's hidden by the tires. But uh, everything time lapse is going to be on there. And the GoPro is going to be the vlog camera from now on. So if the video looks different, that's why. Now you know. Anyways, I'm going to get these wheels out. I'm going to show you guys what they look like now and then what they look like after. All right. So these are the wheels that we got. These are some no name, no idea what they are kind of wheels they're five by 100 18 by 8 wheels and that is why i bought them is just because they are the spec i want and they are five by 100 and five by 100 is really weird it's like it's common but it's still hard to find so pretty much these wheels are really dinged up i'm pretty sure the previous guy used them as drift spares as well so that's why they're so dinged up but um pretty much they were super cheap they were 60 bucks for both of them and i just needed them from drift spares since i have so many 18 inch wheels or uh tires like uh all of these tires in this back corner over here all 18s except for two of them two of them are 17s and i believe two of them are 20s and then all of these over here are also 18s so i pretty much just needed 18 inch rims to be able to use my 18 inch tires and so i can burn them off and all that stuff so it was 60 bucks for both of these super good deal uh just for drift spares i have no idea what the offset is on them but they should fit the frs since it's all stock uh as of right now and if we have any issues with fitment, I'm sure we can get some spacers or something and make it all work. But uh, for now, hopefully they work. Hopefully the offset is good. 
And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sand them all down. Uh, for the most part, we're probably just gonna like scotch brite it or something. I don't really want them to look like perfect. It doesn't need to be powder, powder coated or anything like that, but we're gonna go ahead and sand it down as best we can, clean it up and then paint it. Uh, I think we're just gonna go black again, <laughs> just since they're already black. Uh, it might be better to just go black on them, but I'm gonna take a look here real quick and see what else we have because we might be able to do some cool color on it. Uh, again, they're not they're not the prettiest wheels. They're not wheels I would buy necessarily for my car. It was just the fact that they are drift spares. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna look, see what we have for paint that we have here right now. And if we have anything cool, I'll show you guys. Otherwise, we're probably just gonna go with black and we might just hop into a time lapse here. Also, Austin is on his way. We're gonna work on his radio, so that might also be put in the vlog uh, if we do that. So I'll keep you guys up to date. All right, so here's what we currently have for paint uh, that is like, usable like we have matte clear which is not really paint we got uh plasti dip smoke and a few other like little things here and there this is primer i'm pretty sure um or actually this is white so we do have white as well um so we have white in one can we might be able to get both of them done with that i'm not gonna lie that's probably enough but we also have three cans of flat black and we have one can of this metallic oil rubberized uh bronze I've used this before and this stuff looks amazing. Uh, like it, it's actually one of the coolest paints out of a paint can I've ever seen. That's like just off the shelf. You can't like not having to go dry or like mix a whole can or whatever. Uh, sorry, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Pretty much it's like the best spray can you can buy in my opinion. It is a really, really cool color. It's got like this really cool bronze. Actually, I think I have, I think I have something painted with this. Um, if I'm not mistaken, my power steering, not power steering rack, my manual rack on this car is painted with that so oh it's so dirty though <laughs> yeah that paint didn't really last that long because uh i also dropped the motor on it so yeah it's kind of hard to see but we'll uh i'll clean it up and i'll show you guys just so i can see what uh what that paint looks like i don't think you guys are gonna be able to see it it's probably gonna look like black but we'll try so i cleaned it up as best i could as you guys can see there it's kind of like from a distance it almost looks black but then when you get really close to it it has this almost like spark yeah there we go so it's got like this sparkle to it and it's really it's a really cool color in my opinion it's uh it's definitely one of my favorite sp spray can colors like i've ever seen i haven't seen that many obviously but like it's a very cool color because it just adds this like little bit of depth to the wheels and i really <laughs> i'm thinking about actually using that color because uh i only have like half a can and this can is literally like I want to say it's like five years old now. This can is from 2017. This can is actually three years old. So there's pretty much no way I'm using that paint. Uh, paint does go bad after a certain amount of time. I have no idea what the actual time frame is, but that stuff it will not come out how it did on the wheels I did with it the initial time. And it probably won't even come out like how that power steering or, or the, how that manual rat came out. So I'm probably not going to use that just because of the fact that I don't like using old paint. Uh, the fresher it is, the better. Well, not necessarily fresher, but like, yeah, kind of kind of the newer is better. So I'm thinking we might either go with white or black. Uh, again, I think this black is about three years old too, so I have no idea. So this can is from 2014. This can is from 2016. This can is from 2017. This can is from 2017. This can is from last year. So with that being said, we could use any of these cans really and we'll get probably the same result. We could go black or we can go white is basically my options. Cause I don't really want to use half a can and then have to go buy more. And then one looks better than the other just cause one's older. So that's out of the question. The one thing we are going to do, oh God, I don't know what we want to do on this. Here's where I'm at on this. I want to do black because it's such a safe color. Like black looks good on anything. There's just, you don't need any opinion on it. It looks good on any car. Uh, the thing is though, white, also goes really good on just about any car. I don't even know why I'm thinking about this so much. These aren't even permanent wheels, they're just drift spares. So I think we're gonna go white. We're gonna go white just because it pops so much more. Uh, that's what we're gonna go with. And uh, I'm gonna start painting on this and Austin's gonna be here in probably like 30 minutes or so. So we'll see how long that takes for him to get here. All right, so to start, we're gonna use sandpaper to sand everything down, get a nice smooth surface that we can paint on. Uh, we are gonna be using this uh, Warrior Harbor Freight uh, sandpaper. It's 220 grit to 1200 grit. Uh, it has four different steps that we can take. This will be good enough to get at least a smooth enough surface that it looks okay. It doesn't need to be perfect because it's not, 
an actual body panel or anything it's just a wheel and at that it's a drift wheel so it doesn't need to come out absolutely perfect so 1200 grit would be perfect uh or be, will be fine for what we're doing in a real in a perfect world would use probably like three or four thousand get it super smooth get this type of body work uh where it comes out like super nice and glossy and uh, nice and straight no scratches at all this will still have a little bit of like that uh that look in it that you'll see but you'll probably never be close enough to actually see it so we're going to use uh, tw uh 220 to 1200 grit on our wheels uh there are like i said there's finer ones we don't have any more of the finer ones here so i'm just going to use what we have and then we're going to go ahead sand down the wheels clean them up and then go ahead and paint them All right, so we're about halfway done with this wheel. Uh, we still gotta work on the other half. For some reason, this camera keeps overheating. It's like having an absolute heat stroke, so I'm not sure how much footage we're actually gonna get off this, but uh, we're halfway done with that, and Austin decided to show up. Gonna be working on his radio real quick. So, what's all wrong with the radio? It's just, it won't turn on. So you're thinking it's just a soldering point that fell off or something? All right. So I'm gonna take a look at his radio, see what's not turning on. Uh, he's thinking it's a soldering point on one of the wires for the radio. And I am assuming that it's probably gonna be that or a fuse. So we're gonna pop the radio out, take a look at that real quick. So we got his truck all figured out. It was just a fuse in the main part, uh, or the radio fuse. And then we went ahead and soldered up the wires all up again. So the radio works now, that's all good. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put all these tools away. That's pretty much all we had up, out for the tools. We just re-soldered all of the wires just because some of them weren't soldered, only a few of them were. And then we, uh, we didn't even need to do that technically because the radio did work. It just, it was more for future reference. That way we know that there's no issues with the wiring if we ever come back to it. So we got that all figured out. Now we're gonna go ahead and finish painting all these wheels. Still gotta sand off the rest of this side. I think we're only gonna do one wheel today. And then I'll do another wheel tomorrow and we'll put them side by side and see how it looks. It is just absolutely brutal outside today. It is, it's so bad out here today. Uh, it's like 92 degrees and the humidity is not that high, but it's like, it's, it's, it's bad. Uh, it's not to the point that you're like dripping sweat when you're outside, but as soon as you go inside, you realize how hot it really is outside and it's pretty bad. So anyways, tomorrow it's supposed to actually thunderstorm. And then Wednesday, it's supposed to be like really nice out, but I also need these wheels by Wednesday, assuming that the car gets done anyway. I, I just texted the uh, I just texted Cameron to get a checkup on the car to see if it is gonna get done by Wednesday. If it is gonna get done by Wednesday, we need to rush all of this and get all of these done and painted and ready to go for Wednesday. If not, I might save the other wheel until after Wednesday or until Wednesday to actually clean it up and paint it. But for this one, we have it all sanded down uh pretty much all you want to do when you have it down or when you're doing 220 grit is it's pretty much the the hardest part of doing this is the 220 grit because what you want to do is you want to get rid of all the surface uh clear coats and you want to get all the way down to as far down as possible if you can get all the way down to bare metal that is amazing but if uh if you have like this type of paint underneath that stays it's not a big deal uh, as long as it's nice and smooth because the uh, main goal is to get rid of the clear coat, which primer won't stick to, but primer will stick to old paint. And if the old paint doesn't want to come off, it's fine. It's probably not going to chip off or anything. But keep in mind that I'm also doing this to like drift spec, which means like I don't care to the point that of, of like long lasting because it might end up crashing or getting broken or scratched up or whatever the case may be. Whereas if you guys were doing this for say your street car or you want it to look super, super nice, what you would want to do is you'd want to start with 220, go all the way down to bare metal. Uh, you'd actually probably want to start with paint stripper, then do 220. 
and then after you do the 220 go in layers from 220 to 500 to a thousand to 1500 2000 3000 4000 on and on and on until you feel it's smooth enough which the highest i would probably go is probably like 3000 i don't think anything after that point really makes a difference to be honest so if you were to do that and go all the way down to bare metal go ahead put bondo on it make sure everything's smooth make sure everything looks nice sand it all down and then make it nice and smooth and then paint over it with this one since it is a drift wheel and it's gonna get damaged no matter what the main goal is to just keep it all one color and make it look nice from about two two to five feet as long as it looks good from a distance it really doesn't matter so that's the goal of this that's why i'm not going too detailed with it but i want to make sure that you guys knew in case you're doing this on your own to either do it this way if you do it this way it's going to look good from about five feet if you do it the other way where you go through and you detail everything you bond to it you go all the way down to bare metal all that stuff that's going to be like the up close like showroom type stuff so that's pretty much what uh, i just want to let you guys know that in case you guys are doing this on your own uh to go through and do the extra steps if you are going to do that since we are kind of on a tight uh schedule to get this done and i just want to get it all painted and everything i'm only going to do uh i'm going to jump from 220 to 500 and then from 500 i'm going to paint it because it doesn't need to be that nice and it's already pretty smooth the way it is uh whereas if i were to be doing this for say i don't know camaro or the truck or something where i'm gonna have it on the street and i want it to look really really nice then i would go up to about 1500 to 2000 uh or 3000 and make sure everything's filled in with bondo so just want to point that out and anyways i'm gonna go ahead and paint this or actually i'm gonna go over it with 500 which when you go over it with like 500 1000 whatever you don't have to go as detailed it's just the 225 or the 220 that you want to go in more detail and just get rid of as much clear coat and as much uh abrasive or like as much stuff that the primer won't stick to which is going to be like clear coat uh contaminants anything that's not either direct underpaint or direct metal so anyways i'm gonna go ahead and do 500 i'm not gonna show that on camera and i'm gonna go ahead and paint it all right so i went ahead and i went across with 500 grit now so everything's nice and smooth it looks identical to how it did before but now it's all nice and smoothed out so there's a bunch of dust on it now since we just got done sanding it what we're gonna go ahead and do is normally if i had isopropyl alcohol i'd put that on top or on a cloth and then wipe it down with that but since i don't have any i'm gonna go ahead and use water uh it could contaminate the paint so if you have isopropyl alcohol or if you can get it you might as well because it's going to make it come out a lot better but i'm going to use water on a cloth and hopefully that's clean enough and doesn't contaminate any of the paint or anything like that and then we're going to go ahead and throw a uh, primer on it all right so now that we got everything wiped down as you guys can see there was a lot of uh leftover stuff on this uh on this wheel I basically just want to make sure you get into all the corners as well as possible mainly these uh, lug, lug nut uh, bores. I don't really know what you would call that. <laughs> lug nut spots. Uh, and then you wanna make sure you get into the deep crev crevices too, like this area here. This is a very simple wheel. So on a more complicated wheel, it is gonna be way more time consuming. Uh, the last thing that we wanna do before we decide to primer all this stuff is on this wheel, since we don't have a tire on it, I, I feel like this is kind of common sense, but I wanna say it just in case somebody doesn't know what these are for. These are wheel weights. Uh, pretty much they just determine the balance of the tire. Since I don't have any tires on here, I am free to take those off. If you have a tire on here, you're gonna wanna leave those on. And then you're also going to want to put uh, some note cards around the edge of where the wheel and uh, tire meet and then that'll keep it from over spraying and then you want to leave the wheel or the wheel weights on so you don't have to rebalance your wheel it's kind of common sense but in case you didn't know now you know all right so we went ahead and put the wheel on a piece of cardboard just to make sure that there's no over spray that gets on anything obviously and then we are going to go ahead and try out this uh duplicolor uh primer i it's primer so i'm not sure if it's going to make any difference but this is automotive primer as if it really makes any difference so we're going to go ahead and try it out see if it makes any difference at all and then we're just going to use this uh gloss white it comes with it's just a bigger can pretty much uh this one actually comes with primer built into it uh i don't personally trust primer built into paint so i just go ahead and put a primer uh about two two coats of primer before i actually go to actual paint just because i i personally don't believe in the whole primer and paint thing because it just won't stick as easily as actual primer would so i'm gonna go ahead and stick to the normal primer two coats of primer and then about four coats of actual uh, paints on top 
You don't have to do four coats, but four coats will keep it nice and even and nice and thick too. So it's less likely to chip off or fade or scratch off or anything like that. Uh, you could go more layers. You could go up to like seven or eight layers of actual paint or about four or five layers of actual primer. But since it is a wheel that's not, I'm not too worried about, I'm always able to paint back over it. I'm not too worried about it, but if you are doing these on your normal wheels, I would do as many layers as you possibly can. The more layers, the better. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna paint these. I'm just gonna time lapse it and I'll catch you guys afterward. All right, All right so I totally forgot to say, always wear a mask. You don't wanna be breathing this stuff in. And uh, pretty much we just went around uh, pretty much as many times as possible to get a nice thick layer on it because this primer is very weird. It doesn't, it, it dries like on impact, which is nice, but at the same time, you can't really do it in layers then. You just kind of got to go for it. So I just kind of went for it and kept going around until we got a nice thick layer that you can't see through anymore. And uh, I did that all the way around. You can kind of see through some areas, but uh, for the most part, it's pretty even all the way across. And then on the inner barrel, we actually ran out of primer, so we can't really do the inside anymore. But we're just going to use this um, primer paint on the inside because on the inside it doesn't really matter it's more the face that you care about anyway so we're gonna go ahead and paint this in a little bit once it all dries up which it's probably already dry the way it is but i'm gonna go ahead and blow it all off and make sure that there's no dust on it because this primer seems to leave a lot of dust too and it's just uh it's kind of a mess uh it's a really messy uh primer so anyways i'm gonna go ahead and clean all this up with some uh air and then once we air it all off we're gonna go ahead and go over it with our normal uh, paint. So we're going to start with the white paint, uh, the only paint, but uh, we're going to go ahead and start by going with the inner barrel first. That way we can get everything on the inner barrel nice and well done. And then on the outside, it won't have too much paint to leak over and look bad on the front. So we're going to start with the inner and then work our way to the outer. That's the way I like to do it. You can always do it the other way too. Either way is fine. I just prefer going with the inner first and then going to the outer. So this is the first inner barrel uh, coat. We basically just go across. It's gonna be really patchy at first, but then the more we go across it, the more it's gonna even out and look the way it's supposed to look. So right now it looks really bad. It's just kind of like white in some areas and then black in others. We're gonna let it sit for about five to 10 minutes. Uh, it should, shouldn't should take too long in today's weather. So uh, uh, you wanna go ahead and let it sit, let it kind of dry out. And then once it's almost dry, you go ahead and put your next coat on. All right, so this is layer number two. Sorry if I feel like, or sorry if I sound very not energetic. I just feel very, I don't know, drained of energy because of the heat. Anyway, uh, this is layer two. We went a little bit thicker on the second layer. And then on the third layer, we're gonna go about the same thickness, just all the way across. And then we're gonna only do three layers on the inside. And I think we're gonna do four layers on the outside, just to make sure the outside looks nice. But the inside doesn't have to look perfect because it's the inside, nobody's gonna really ever see it. And then that's about it. So uh, we are gonna wait another five to 10 minutes, wait for that to dry. But while we're waiting, I actually got a text back from Cameron and he's the one currently doing the front end on the FRS. He is actually, he actually texted me back and he said he might have it done by Wednesday. So we're gonna go full force, try to get everything done by Wednesday, try to be ready for Wednesday night drift. And uh, the one thing about Wednesday night drift this time is normally, I don't know if you guys can see me, I think I was silhouet silhouetting there. But uh, the one thing about Wednesday night drift this time is normally it's a pretty small event. The only difference between that and this time is this time there's still a lot of people on quarantine, like myself, who are gonna be able to attend this event where normally they wouldn't be able to. And on top of that, it's a $25 event for like four hours of driving, which is a super good deal. And we have to share the track with drag racers, which is fine if we didn't have a limited number of slots. Normally they don't have, they don't have a limit on slots, but because of the Minnesota half open uh, rule right now, we are only allowed 45 people at the track, which is kind of uh, scary because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a spot. I'm going to have to, re uh, they have to do uh, pre-reg, so reservations on your spots. And I'm going to try and pre-reg tonight if the link comes out tonight. Otherwise, if it comes out tomorrow, I'll go ahead and get on it tomorrow. But more than likely, uh, we might not make it to the event. Just the simple fact that there's only 45 spots and there are going to be a ton of people trying to get that uh, spot because 
there has been no drive time this year. There has been a total of like three or four events. Two of them were like super low key, like you had to know the person, uh, otherwise you were not getting in. And then the other two were like very, like they were filled within like a few minutes because everybody just wants drive time this year and there's just no drive time out there. So anyways, uh, just wanna let you guys get, in, or give you guys an update on the FRS and what's going on with it. And uh, when we can expect to have it back, which would be Wednesday, hopefully Wednesday morning or maybe Tuesday night if we're lucky, but he's, he's very close to being done with it. And uh, knowing Cam, he might actually get it done a little bit early. So if he does, that'd be amazing. If not, it's okay as long as we get it back by Wednesday. I am happy with that. I'm completely happy with that. So uh, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go get some water or something because it is so hot right now. I just, I can't even begin to tell you guys how like drained of energy I am right now. Just the weather is terrible and I, I can feel a storm coming, but. <laughs> Anyways, I'll catch you guys in a little bit uh, when we put the third layer of paints on and then we're only gonna do one more layer of paint and then we're gonna do probably about four layers on the front, like I said, and we're gonna maybe clear coat it. I think I have enough clear coat for that one wheel. And then tomorrow we're gonna do the same thing for the other wheel because I just do not have the energy to do it on the other wheel today. Uh, so hopefully it doesn't rain tomorrow, but it probably will. So <laughs> we might run one black wheel, one white wheel, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so we just did one last like super thick layer, like thicker than a sticker layer. And uh, as you guys can see, it is nice and even now. Looks good all the way around. I mean, there's some areas like the old tape for the weights is, uh, is still black, obviously. If I wanted to, I could have scraped all that stuff off and made it look all nice. Again, I don't care too much about all the little details because it is a drift wheel. If this was an actual wheel, I'd put a lot more time into it, like painting the inner barrel and all that stuff. But with it being a drift wheel and me being in a rush, I just don't care enough to do all those little tiny things. So anyways, with that all painted, and since we are gonna be painting it anymore until we get to clear coat, we are gonna go ahead and start doing the face. We're gonna do the exact same thing that we did with the barrel, only we're gonna go from side to side, about 12 inches from the uh, wheel itself, and just paint downward, and it should only take a few minutes. Uh, to like, It should take about a minute per layer, and should take about hmm, 30 minutes in total to do all of this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna skip over it. Well, not skip over it, but I'm gonna time lapse it for you guys. Quit talking and just get this video done and over with so you guys can see the final product. All right, so the Sony camera ended up dying, so the time lapse cut out a little bit early. But we went ahead and we did three, I think, I think we did three layers. Maybe we did four layers, but I'm pretty sure we only did three layers of paint because it looks fine and uh, it's not that big of a deal if it wears off or anything like that. Then we went ahead and we did two coats of clear on top and it gave it a pretty nice gloss. It looks a lot better on the camera. But uh, it has a pretty nice gloss, and I think these look a lot better than the uh, way it looked when we got it. So I'm pretty happy with it, pretty stoked on this, and uh, I think that is going to look pretty good on the car. It's going to look a way better than the really messed up. Let's go ahead and put it side by side real quick. Or not side by side, but let's compare it to this one over here. So I mean, this one, it looks pretty good, but I mean, you could just see, even in the camera, it is just, it has been through some things. So... I think, I think we did a pretty good job on this. I think that looks way better than the black and I think it's gonna look really good on the car for being drift spares. It's not the final wheels, I need to keep saying that because I don't wanna hear anybody go, dude, that's gonna look horrible. Why would you go with that wheel? I'm going with the wheel because it was cheap. It was $60 wheels for two of them and I needed them for drift spares. That's why I got them. So pretty much these are not the final wheels. I can't stress that enough. These are not the final wheels for the FRS, but that's a pretty good deal. Uh, I think it would cost like 40 bucks for a full set. It's only costing us like 10 bucks to do this to get them looking all nice and everything. So I think it's definitely worth the investment. So for $10, it is actually a very good investment in my opinion to make the car look just a little bit better. Uh, when we are sliding it. Anyways, I got some more good news though. If you guys are new here, go ahead and hit subscribe. I forgot to say that. But anyways, pretty much the FRS is planned to be done on Wednesday. I talked about this already. Wednesday night's gonna happen. 
Uh, it's going to be 45 people. I don't know if I'm going to have a pass for that yet. I still got to check to see if they put the uh, link to register already. And hopefully it's not sold out by the time I get to it. But on top of the Wednesday night, Proving Grounds has been approved. And if you guys don't know what Proving Grounds is, it's a big event up at Brainerd. It is the biggest event of the year, usually. Uh, Proving Grounds 1 is usually the biggest event of the year. The sad thing is this year, there's going to be no spectators at all. So it's going to be just drivers, uh, just drag racing, time attack, uh, drifting, all that stuff. But it's only going to be drivers, which for me, that's a really good thing because that means a lot of seat time. But at the same time, it also is not that great because uh, that means I'm pretty much paying to go drive at an event that I get less seat time in without the spectators. But for me, I am going mainly for the driving time anyway. So for me, I look at it as a very good thing. But for all my friends, they're looking at it as like a bad thing because there aren't going to be people there. And that is the main reason why they go there is to party and all that stuff. So it's kind of, it kind of sucks for uh, the people on that end. But for me, I think it's a very good thing because I'm gonna get more seat time than normal. It only cost me $80 for an entire weekend. Unless they end up charging me more, they might end up charging me more just because of the fact that there's gonna be a limited amount of people there. But either way, I'm gonna be getting more seat time and I'm gonna try and sneak my uh, friends in as pit crew. And uh, if I can do that, we're gonna have a hell of a time at Proving Grounds. Anyways, that's it for this video, guys. We're gonna go ahead and finish that wheel tomorrow. I'll probably catch up with you guys when we get the car back. Also, I found this WX wing laying around, so we got that back. <laughs> I don't know where that was this whole time. So if anyone needs one, hit me up. I have one. Anyways, peace out. I'm out. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya. I seen a lot of shit I shouldn't have, but never forgot it though. Brothers on the corner selling crack like it was not a though. Walk inside my kitchen, baking soda all up on the floor. Cody's banging on the dough while gripping the 44. I was just a youngin', but this type of shit I seen before. Y'all see a white boy, but my daddy a Negro. Half breed motherfucker grip the mic and he flow. I just wanna spread love, they want me to bleed slow. I just wanna keep the peace.